Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new series. This is of course the first video in my entire December challenge, which is of course to do one video every other day. And of course that aside, this video is the first in a series of four. This series is called Bit Manipulation, something that happens all the time at a low level in computing. At a higher level, sometimes we do it because sometimes we need to. But yeah, we're gonna look precisely at why we need it, when we need it, and of course, more importantly, how it's done. Now that you know what's coming up, let's start the episode properly, of course, after the break. This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. So, bit manipulations. What is it? Why do we need it? And of course, how do we do it? We're gonna answer the first two of these three questions today. Now, you'll notice that a lot of the things I cover here kind of sort of mirror the Logic Gate series, which I did, I don't know, one or two years back. However, we're going to actually look at essentially the same issue from a slightly different perspective. When we did the Logic Gate series, essentially we're thinking in terms of, oh, there is this physical component that will do this sort of processing. For this entire series, we're going to actually take a look at things from the other perspective. Essentially, we want to see, you know, how bits are actually used to form numbers and how we can exploit the property that a number is essentially a bunch of bits to, you know, do cool things with just a number. So let's start. As mentioned earlier, a number and actually everything in a computer is made up of bits. You can think of a bit like just any old number, except any old number can, you know, get larger and larger, a bit only has two unique states. Zero, which is also known as off, is also known as false, or one, which is known as on or true. Essentially, that is all a computer has to work with. Most of the time, this would be the absence or presence of a current. If it's reading things off a hard disk or a CD, that will of course be the absence or presence of a magnetic field or of course, deflection of the laser, respectively. At any rate, it all boils down to the same thing, which is why we talk about it in abstract terms of 0 or 1, and that of course is whether or not something, whatever it is, is absent or present. Now, if we can only work with numbers with two distinct values, of course it's not very meaningful, but what we can do is to actually put a whole bunch of these bits together to actually form more meaningful information. For example, when you put 8 of these bits together, you can actually toggle each of them and every possible combination will actually represent a different number. In fact, if you have 8 bits, you'll be able to produce 256 different numbers. Why 256? Well, very quickly, to calculate this, you take 2 to the power of 8. That is 2, which stands for the number of unique states each digit can represent, to the power of 8. That is, how many of them do you put together? This is less important, it's just there because it helps to complete the picture. We're not going to talk about things in a very mathematical sense. Instead, we want to look at things from the point of view of we have a number and we sort of want to break it down into its bits in a way that we cannot see but can exploit. This will of course become more evident as we move on, so don't be too worried about that just yet. So here's the issue we want to try and tackle. Now, sometimes in programming, what we have are these values called Boolean values. Essentially, they can be represented by a single bit. The reason for that, of course, is that a Boolean value only has two unique states, true or false. Or, of course, if you're using another programming language, it might be zero or one. But as mentioned earlier, they mean the same thing. Now, what happens is when we have a bunch of Boolean values, what we can do is we can put them together in a structure known as an array. However, this is generally speaking not the most efficient way to do things. Depending on how individual programming languages are actually written, things might behave a little bit differently. But what this boils down to is the fact that sometimes certain programming languages do not save Boolean values as just a single bit. Programming languages like Java do not normally reserve just a single bit to store a Boolean value. It's just not practical to work with individual bits. As a result, a Boolean value, when stored in RAM, 
actually takes up an entire byte of 8 bits. What this means is that, even though your information only requires 1 bit's worth of memory to store, a full byte of 8 bits is used, even though really 7 of these bits are wasted. What happens then is that if you have an array of boolean variables, you might be wasting 7 bits times the number of boolean variables you have. Our goal by the end of this series is to not have this wastage. We're going to actually use a number, but the actual value of the number doesn't matter to us. Instead, we want to actually work with all its individual bits and, well, use them as individual boolean variables. So I hope you see the motivation behind what we are doing today. I'm basically going to wrap up the episode here, but hopefully this will be enough to, you know, interest you to see how we can move on. But yes, that's all there is for episode number one of this bit manipulation series. I'll see you in two days for the next episode. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. Don't forget to appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612tv.